G'day, it's Rob here again today. Well, I got a little job here I have to do. I have to make up some uh, pins for uh, welding cables uh, for an arc welder. And uh, basically, this is the, the knob that screws on uh, to with a pin. And the pin goes, is, this will be cut off. Then the pin will be clamped into a universal connector. So that way you can use uh, heavy duty cables on one of those small welders with the um, with the male female uh, connector. You just basically fit this into the male connector, um, grub screw it in with a little grub screw, and then you put your heavy cables on the end. Okay, now it's easy to do this, and I'm just going to basically use a couple of UNC. Uh, bolts because this is a UNC thread in the peerless um, knob that screws on and uh, basically I just have to weld uh, these nuts onto these bolts and that way then you can put your tab in screw your, your connector knob on uh, I mean you could do this with stick weld but it would be you know pretty horrible and also, you can't slide your nut right up against the, the face of the, of the female section that's going in because you've got a great hunk of weld there. So this is where bronze brazing uh, comes into its own. It's, uh, it's the way to go, in my opinion, because with this sort of job, we'll just run the braze into the, the back of the nut and it will just capillarate into the thread. Now what I might do actually, I might just drill out the back of the nut to put a bit of a bit of a recess there before I do the job. And uh, I'll do that in the lathe. Just uh, just put a, a concave on the back of the of the thread entrance. And there's a bit of one there at the moment, but we'll make it bigger. And that way, you don't have to put a ton of uh, bronze in. It will just flow into that. Uh, a little uh, taper and uh, then you can just machine it back clean and afterwards get a perfectly flat face on it. So okay, I'll spin these up in the lathe first. Right, to do this job I'm going to use the bullfinch that you would have seen in other videos. It's the auto torch brazing system that just does uh, bronze brazing with standard LPG gas. It's just an ordinary non-KG bottle, so we'll get on with it. Right, when you do this sort of work you've got to conserve your heat energy as much as possible, so you isolate your work from any, you know, heat sink situations and I've just got a bit of old scrap you can see it's well used and we'll just mount the, uh, the bolt down through one of these holes that one so we can then come in on the back of the nut so the nut goes on we can be welding on the back side put the nut on my fingers are cold as well as freezing in Adelaide so it's a pretty cold day to be doing brazing but at least it might warm me up a bit Right, let's see what we've got. Get the depth right. That's 
good. Okay, now we just put it in our hole. Square it up. Give it a nice flow, and then we'll just braze into the back of that bolt with the with the torch. Now we're going to be using some easy 303 flux for bronze brazing. And we'll be using some standard manganese bronze general purpose brazing rods, which are these little devils. Now this is not silver solder, this is proper hard bronze rod, you know. Um, you could probably do this with silver solder, I suppose. I, I wouldn't want to do it myself that way, but anything's possible. You could even use some Loctite if you wanted to, but I like to do, do jobs properly. So we'll use the bronze rod. Once again, I'm, I'm using un, uncoated rods. I don't like coated rods because by using an uncoated rod, you can put your flux on first, let it do its work, then apply the rod. You've got a coated rod, you're putting on the, the flax and the rod at the same time, which is rat shit. Uh, you want to get your flax all set up, put on just the, the amount of flax you want. You can totally control it all by, by doing this with an uncoated rod and then just put your, uh, put your bronze on as much as you need and you're not adding any more flax. Right, let's fire this baby up. That's all there is to it, you know, get your flax on first and then get it hot and then just wipe your bronze around and then make sure you flow it into the gap properly, piece of cake. Right, now we just quench it and that will lift a bit of the, uh, bit of the flax residue off. So, you know, you can see you haven't got any daggy welds there. It's all gone into the back of the nut and uh, now it's just a matter of just cleaning it up a little bit, cut off the head and uh, yeah, we're nearly there.
Right, you can see that the job turned out okay. There's no bleed through onto the actual thread area we're going to use. Our knob will just go on like so with the welding cable tab in between. This will fit up inside the, uh, the cable connector and we'll be able to use, as I said, long cables on one of those universal uh, male-female connectors which aren't really designed for that, but it'll do the job. I'm using a steel bolt. I think, oh, you know, should it be brass? No, steel's quite okay on a welder. In fact, some of the cable connectors you buy are actually steel and the outlets on most of the old welders are steel bolts, so no. There won't be any voltage amperage drop. After, after all, when you weld, it's going through steel anyway to complete the circuit, so you can quite safely use steel. All right, on the back, that turned out reasonably okay. I'll come in close. There you go, you can get a bird's eye view there. It's, uh, yeah, turned out good. And on the back, you can see where the bronze ran into that depression. We machined, and now I'll just, I mean, you could use them like that quite all right but I'll just clean them up in the in the lathe with a uh, parting off blade or something just to get a nice flat finish on the back and we're good to go just a matter of then cut them to length when you go to use them So we'll use the world's cheapest parting off blade holder to do this job. You can see that in one of my other videos. Oh, get the light where I can see. And we'll just clean up the back of the nut. Okay, job done. Simple as that. Anybody can do bronze brazing. It's very simple. You can use LPG torch like I've got, the Bullfinch. Uh, and if you look at my old videos, you can see reviews on that, see what model it is, the whole bit. You can do this with nap gas as well. It's no big deal. Uh, this is proper bronze. It's not silver solder. I know people do use silver solder, but that's not my cup of tea. But yeah, you can see no bleed through. It was done properly. Uh, will have capillarated from the back through the nut into the nut so it's bonding all the way inside that nut plus in that cavity I, I drilled into the back of it which I then faced off. If you were to use a, a MIG welder to do this job you'd, A you'd have a shitty looking weld at the back particularly on round stuff and B it's only um, going to be on the periphery and C you can't really grind it back to get a nice clean finish like that so it butts up fully inside the tube it's going into. So bronze brazing has got a lot, well gas, any gas brazing has got a lot of things going for it. Okay, well there you go. Bit of useful information that you might uh, pick up on and yeah, time for lunch and I'll see you next time. Cheers.